Hi everybody, a more difficult 25 marker that can come in either paper 1, paper 2 or paper 3 is when you've got to discuss more than one policy, so a multi-policy question, or you've got to discuss more than one thing. So for example, multi-policy could be discuss all the policies available to the government to increase economic growth. It could be discuss the range of policies available to reduce a given market failure. Whereas discussing more than one thing could be having to discuss the consequences of inflation and deflation in one essay, and then your judgment is which one is worse, high inflation or deflation. So something like that. These are harder questions to structure because there is so much more to write about. This video is going to cover the structure in nice simplistic detail for you. Uh, you start in the same way. You start with definitions. So defining all the key terms that are in the question in the same way that you're used to. Um, then you just think, the on the one hand, on the other hand structure is absolutely fine. Just go in order. So for example, policy one, let's just stick to a multi-policy question here. Here's one policy that can be used to increase growth, let's say. So you pick your first policy, you explain it in detail with chains of analysis, you have good application, whether it's from extracts if you have them or from your own knowledge, whatever. So good application, depth of analysis, you explain how that policy can do whatever the question is saying in detail, maybe with a diagram in there as well. You make sure that you're answering the question. You then go on the other hand, the same policy, ah, here's a problem with that policy, right? And you explain that in real depth, you've got application there as well, and whatever limitation you're talking about helps you answer the question. What I wouldn't worry about too much is explicit evaluation here. You can leave, if you want, the, the evaluation to the end in your judgment. Because when you do on the one hand and then on the other hand for this policy, you're kind of evaluating there already. So I wouldn't worry too much about looking to evaluate every point you make. It'll just be too much and your structure will go wild. And it won't be a nice thing to read either. So there's one policy on the one hand and on the other hand as we're used to doing with the same depth that we're used to, with the same kind of application that we're used to, answering the question in real detail, with diagrams maybe to help you of course. You then say, right, well, here's a, a second policy. Again, on the one hand, here's another policy that can be used to increase growth, let's say. Again with depth, again with application. If you're really on the ball, it depends on the kind, the kind of question that you're asked. Maybe the second policy you use can directly overcome the limitation of your first policy. For a market failure multi-policy question, I think that definitely can be done. So maybe your limitation of an indirect tax to solve market failure is inelastic demand, in which case policy two might be regulation, a non-market-based approach to deal with reducing consumption of something, let's say. So that's your policy two on the one hand, still to answer the question, of course. Uh, you then say, right, on the other hand, here's a problem with this policy, your second policy. So exactly the same way as before, right? you need to do depth of analysis and application, but you see the structure here. Here's one policy, here's a problem. Here's a second policy, maybe that can overcome the problem of the first, ah, but here's a problem with that. And you do that again if there are three policies you need to talk about, or if there are four policies, and that would be a wild, difficult question to do if there are four policies. But that's the basic structure. On the one hand, policy one, problem, policy one. On the one hand, policy two, problem, policy two. On the one hand, policy three, problem policy three, okay, and that's what you do. Still looking for depth of analysis and application throughout. Then you make your judgment, and you make your judgment in the same way, and this is where you really need to evaluate properly and come to a good answer to the question. Maybe the, the answer is, here's the policy that's the best, maybe the answer is, here's the range of policies that are the best, whatever. You come to real evaluative skill and to a judgment here at the end of your answer. You've got to do that well. And that's where your evaluation is going to be the best it can be. So it's okay if you don't evaluate throughout the essay, and you really do well in your judgment. For a long question like this where you're talking about a lot, the expectation for you to evaluate throughout is unrealistic. So that covers this. It's a very tricky little structure. Again, I recommend taking a minute just to plan this essay before you start, to write the basic points that you're going to make, to write the order of the policies that you're going to be talking about. Uh, and then you'll be absolutely fine for this kind of question as well. As always, practice makes perfect. So find these kind of questions, practice the planning, practice the writing, and you'll be fine for your exam. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.